Wow, how about that? It's still there, weeks later, and it's still there. Conway, Texas's Bug Ranch is obviously a little different than Cadillac Ranch because my Route 66 shield is still here. Other people added some colors and I did a little bit of touch up work just to brighten it up today. But it's still there, that is pretty Awesome, Route 66, right over there. BW Bug, Slug Bug, or just plain Bug Ranch. I love that the Bug Ranch has outlived the businesses that it was meant to promote. Look at it, just sitting out here. I'm trying to make my way back to California as fast as humanly possible now, mostly because I can't extend the rental car anymore. Apparently its tags are gonna expire. But it's impossible not to make a few stops in Texas, especially to check up on the Route 66 shield here. If you're ever coming through the area, touch it up. Let's keep it going. Let's see how long it lasts. The whole Southwest is going through a crazy heat wave, especially Arizona, parts of New Mexico. Not looking forward to getting out there. But I am looking forward to getting home. I gotta spend some time with my family. And of course, I have new adventures planned for the future once I recover from this one. Ugh. That Route 66 shield over there on that old car. This one didn't survive. I had to repaint it, but what was there was most of the random land. This will probably be covered up pretty quickly again, but still, I had to put it back. Conway, Texas has certainly seen some more profitable days than the modern day, but still, look at that. What a beautiful sight. I mean, in one way, it's really ugly because it's covered with spray paint and it's broken down buildings and old broken down cars. You could look at it that way. But then you look at it again and there's something romantic about it. Something inspiring, something mysterious. And something beautiful. You have the wildflowers and the butterflies and whatnot flying around, mixing in with the spray paint in the background. I don't know, I just like it. Obviously the Bug Ranch was inspired by the much more famous Cadillac Ranch set up on the other side of Amarillo from where we are now. But this isn't actually the only Cadillac Ranch imitator. It's not even the only one in the area. Way down the country roads, out in the middle of nowhere, pretty much, is this Cadillac Ranch with combines. Wow, and they took it up a notch here. Look it, there's not just one row, it's multiple rows of combines. It's been here since 2002 and it's known as Combine City. Pretty cool that they put up that sign there so people would know exactly what it is. They also put up this sign though, so it's sort of mixed messages. Come look at our combines, but don't you touch them. Don't you touch them now. And don't even think of spray painting them. Actually, these ones look better without spray paint. If there was tagging all over these, somehow it just wouldn't be as impressive. Back at the Bug Ranch, the sheriff had pulled over to talk to some other people who'd pulled over to take a look. And uh, he asked me, oh, where are you headed to next? And I said, I'm going to Combine City. It's Cadillac Ranch and Farm Combines. You know what he said? He said, I think someone's been pulling your leg. I do not think that exists. Well, I'm happy to report that the mystical Combine City does in fact exist. It's a beautiful, wonderful sight. But as for spray painting on it, that's a no-no. What a country, huh? Of course, let's keep things in perspective. There's nothing quite like the original. There can only be one original American Stonehenge. The ultimate roadside icon, the original Cadillac Ranch. I keep making a fist today. I think all these ranches are just making me feel, I don't know, so powerful. I'm feeling the power. This field has certainly become much more green in the last couple of weeks since I was here. Look at my Route 66 shield here. Long gone. Also since the last time we were here, summer vacation has begun, so there are significantly more people here doing their thing, spray painting all these beloved Cadillacs. Most people never even notice they go from earlier model to later model Cadillacs, and the tail fins get bigger and bigger as you go along. From what I understand, Cadillac still makes a fine automobile, but I've never wanted to own one. Perhaps if they brought back the tail fin, that might change my mind. There's just something about them, so sexy, so swanky. On three Three sides you can see the city slowly encroaching on Cadillac Ranch. They moved it once before because it used to be closer to Amarillo. Always makes me wonder if they'll ever move it again. I really don't know if they should do that. Right now the setting seems so perfect. I mean, where better to have Cadillac Ranch than in a field that grows spray paint bottles? Yes sir, it's one strange and colorful crop they got out here. It's interesting because this is the same way they grow Skittles. Well, we've said plenty enough about Cadillac Ranch on other occasions, but how could I not 
stop by and complete the trilogy Amarillo's three strange vehicular Stonehenge-like monuments. And now it's time to keep heading towards California. First we gotta head a block over and say goodbye to our old friend, the Second Amendment Cowboy. We'll miss you, Cowboy. Keep America strong. I love seeing all the different versions of the muffler, man. All right, goodbye, Cowboy. Ooh, I almost forgot something I wanted to show you just down the road in Vega, Texas, is this. The Circa 1924 Magnolia Gas Station. Road widening's killed a lot of these old gas stations, and this one has a shorter porch today than it would have had in the 1920s. But that is still one beautiful restoration. Look upstairs. The proprietors would have lived up there. As a matter of fact, Kenneth and Marie Lloyd were married in the station in 1935 and lived above it. It was known as the Highway Service Station, like HI Highway Service Station back then. And they sold Magnolia gasoline that later became mobile gas. This is pretty cool. Behind the station is this giant air Arrow commemorating a time when Comanches camped here on their way west. Of all the giant arrows I've seen, this one looks the most like it could actually be fired. Look at that, there's a notch in the shaft up there, nice fletching, pretty cool. Texas sure is a lot of fun, ain't it, baby? Ew, who even are you? <laughs> Good one, baby. All right, zooming down old Highway 66 back into Adrian, Texas. Look at this. Every time I come through these little towns, I notice something new, like this thing right here. So many old service stations, filling stations, gas stations, whatever you want to call them. This one appears to be missing most of a wall back there, but it's still just got that look. Buildings don't get overgrown as fast out west as they do back east, so they tend to last a little longer, especially the paint. It's not as wet out here. Wow, look at that old door and the rubble there. Well, Pigeon, you scared me. How are pigeons everywhere? I feel like you could go to the North Pole and there'd still be pigeons. Look at that awesome old doorknob, old door plate right there. That is so cool. I also never noticed this strange sign in town before. Pig on a stick. I have no idea what that's for or what that means, but there it is. I know that the same people responsible for Cadillac Ranch have a program in Amarillo of strange, unusual traffic signs. Could this be one of them? Inquiring minds want to know. Of course, coming to Adrian, we can't forget about the bent door at the Midway Station. No matter how many times I see this weird bent door, I just, I, I feel so happy. This place was built in 1947, partially out of an old air traffic control tower from an army base right after World War II. It's a lot easier to tell without that tree in the way. They really gotta do something about that. For the last 10 or 11 years, they've been saying they're gonna restore this place. Hopefully that comes true. I just like to check on this place every time I come through. All right, it's time to head not towards El Dordo, but down further into Adrian. <laughs> I did it! I did it again! I have once again crossed the midpoint line. Halfway to Chicago, halfway to LA, 1,139 miles to go. That's so weird. Last time I was here, I was halfway to Chicago. Now I'm halfway back from Chicago. So because I'm going there to there, and then back to there, really, when I was on my way to Chicago, I was only a quarter of the way through the journey, and now I'm only three quarters of the way back, so the halfway point here isn't really halfway to anything, but I'm halfway. So really, this is only halfway the halfway point for us. The midpoint of Route 66 is the quarter and three quarter point of our thing. I don't care. Still celebrating. Just think of all the kicks we've got on Route 66. This painted line on the ground really makes me feel like we've accomplished something, even though, you know, we've got quite a long way left to go. Well, I guess there's no time for dilly-dallying. Time for us to hit the old dusty trail and leave Texas. And there's no better place to do that than in Glen Rio. There's very little to indicate the Texas state line today. Just a little wooden sign, a concrete plinth, and a slight change in the color of the pavement. <gasps> We've done it. We just traveled from Glen Rio, Texas to Glen Rio, New Mexico. Wait a minute, there's a New Mexico now? You can see once upon a time, this was a four lane divided highway through Glen Rio. And now I've had my car sitting right over there for about 45 minutes, I was talking on the phone. And one, and only one car has come by in all that time, pulled in off the interstate, took a look around, 
and turned around. To be fair, old 66 does turn into a dirt road through many cattle ranches going this way for miles and miles and miles. And it's 103 degrees and all the businesses are closed in Glen Rio, which now only has a population of two, by the way. So there's not much to do in this town anymore. Well, except Scooty Putin. Those old Glen Rio nights, them old Glen Rio days. Scooty Putin, 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 Scooty Putin. Trust me, all those Glen Rio ladies love those dance moves. Every single one of them you see was duly impressed. Look at that. That's the sign that used to say first motel in Texas. And on the other side, what's true for us today, last motel in Texas. It's time for us to leave Glen Rio and blast our way into New Mexico, down past old San Juan. And into one of my favorite towns of all time. That's right, we're back in Tucumcari. Man, every time I come here, I bring the rain clouds with me. You guys remember Tucumcari? Last time I was here, I spent the night at the famous Blue Swallow Motel. It was great. I got nothing bad to say at the Blue Swallow. What a great time. Actually, when I was here last, I left something behind. Let's see if it's still here. <laughs> oh, yep, right where I left him. Look at this little donkey I got from Oatman. He's the twin of the one I gave Oscar. That one's name was Umberto. I think this one's name should be Rolando, because he's the random land adventure donkey. Rolando the Burro, hanging out right here at the Blue Swallow. Well, since I spent my last night in Tucumcari at the Blue Swallow, I decided that tonight I should find different accommodations. No, I'm not staying here. Clint Eastwood could do whatever he wants. No, I'm gonna ride out that creepy looking rainstorm right here at the Roadrunner Lodge. Because there's no better place to get your 1960s 60 swing on Route 66. Before we check out the room, how about we cruise in their 1960s Ford Galaxy? Last time I was here, one of the owners, David, really wanted to take me for a cruise in that Ford Galaxy, but they couldn't get it started. So they were pretty glad I came back to get a cruise. I love this place. I love that car. That is what I want. I want one of those. The beautiful 1960s Ford Galaxy 500. Look at those taillights right there. Talk about 60s swing. If I ever find one for a super bargain price or the seller accepts hugs as payment, I would definitely get one. The owners, David and Amanda, are the friendliest people ever. They know a lot about Route 66, a lot about local history, and have created an unparalleled experience experience here. You gotta request the 60s swank rooms and when you do, walking into your hotel room feels like stepping back in time. They have their own radio station with vintage commercials playing. By all means try Anna. You'll like the convenience of Anna's This place is sparkling clean. Has free moon pies. The most comfortable beds ever. Magic Fingers. Groovy lighting. No, seriously, super groovy lighting. Old timey furniture and reading material. And this one has an epic old Viewmaster still in the original case and an original vintage operation game. Look at that, the doctor's smoking while he's operating. Pretty sure they're not allowed to do that anymore. Oh, poopers, I just realized. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to upload this video. If they didn't have Wi Fi in the 60s, luckily the Roadrunner does. I realize I sound like I'm making a commercial right now, and yes, I paid for this room. I just can't help it. I can't help loving this place. Oh, the storm. All right, well, it's starting to come down now. Getting a little bit of stinging rain. Big old fat rain. And I think some thunder and lightning are also on the way. So this is my excuse to go and take a rest back in the 60s. Thank you guys for getting some more kicks on old Route 66 with me. I'm pretty tired of driving now. I think I've done my duty. Hotel and sleep well. stands for sleep. Oh, dang, I should have said the R stands for relaxation. That would have been better. Those old Glen Rio nights, them old Glen Rio days. Scooty boop boop boop, scooty boop, scooty boop, scooty boop. 
That's how you scooty poot. What?